Hey guys, my name is Mitchell and I grow spicy peppers in my basement. I wanted to show you guys today all the cool things that you can make with spicy peppers. Uh, if you take a look right here, I've got a whole bunch of chocolate habaneros that I grew in my basement. Uh, they're quite spicy but also very tasty. And uh, yeah, we're going to cut these up with a few other ingredients here you got uh, on the side. Make some hot sauce, but uh, before we do that I wanted to show you a few of the other things that you can make with spicy peppers. This is a, a spicy pepper jelly made from Sugar Rush Red peppers. Uh, this is some spicy pepper powder. Same with all these guys over here. Um, got some, some pretty spicy ones. These are just made with dried peppers. Uh, we love putting them on things like popcorn. Um, the, uh, the jelly is really nice on charcuterie boards or just with crackers and cream cheese. And here's a bottle of hot sauce I made. Hot sauce just goes on everything. Uh, we love spicy food. So uh, yeah, we go through quite a bit. This bottle was full like a week ago. But before I start showing you guys how I make my hot sauce, why don't we take a look downstairs at the grow tent I built and uh, I'll show you guys how I grow all of my pepper plants. Okay, so we're downstairs. This is, uh, this is the grow tent. As you can see, I built it myself. Uh, it takes up most of my basement. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's, let's go inside and take a quick look here. So these here, these are all my hydroponic plants. And then I've got some of my younger soil plants. These are all in three gallon containers or two gallon containers. I've got a couple more hydroponic plants. And then these are my, my big guys. Um, the one on the right here is a Bootla Bubblegum 7 Pot Red. Let me actually flip that off. The blue lights are good, but uh, I really don't like how the color shows up on film. So you can see there's a, there's a few peppers starting here. Let's uh, take a look back in there. Oh yeah. That's a good one. Got uh, got another one back here. You can see that guy there. Come on, leaf. And a few little ones kind of throughout the plant. So these guys, this plant makes very, very, very spicy peppers. Um, I will only use like one or two of these for uh, for a batch of hot sauce, or else it's just too much for me, at least. A lot of people like really, really spicy food. I only like really spicy food. And uh, yeah, like I said, these guys are just growing in, uh, in buckets. Uh, this is the chocolate habanero plant. So this the guy's an absolute monster. Um, and you can see here, it has tons of other peppers growing on it. So like these ones aren't ripe yet, but I'll have at least one or two more harvests off of this plant before, um, well, before the end of the season, I guess. Oh yeah, I look like that guy's kind of ripening up a little bit. Might uh, be able to pick that one soon. I really want to try some chocolate habanero jelly. So that'll be a fun experiment. That one there. Another guy on the other side there. So yeah, tons of peppers starting on this plant. A oh, bunch back there. And, like I said, they're, uh, they're growing. So this method is called uh, deep water culture. And essentially the idea is that I can grow the roots into these buckets and uh, use these air pumps to pump oxygen into the reservoirs so that the plant doesn't drown. Um, because one of the things that plants do need is, is oxygen. Um, and what the, the air pump allows me to do is basically keep the, the level of liquid much higher. Um, whereas with the other method I use, we kind of need to give it a little bit more room to make sure the plant can still breathe. But I'll get into that. Um, so we're kind of jumping to the end here, but I will show you guys. Um, the, the roots of this plant, which I've now cut back a few times and let it regrow. Um, one of the great things about pepper plants is you can just keep growing them. Uh, some of them will live for up to five years. Oh, look at that, got another little guy starting right there. <laughs> so yeah, let me pop this open for you guys and uh, I'll show you what the roots look like. Oh yeah. Look at that. So this is a, a pretty big root ball. You can see the, the air hoses going in there. You can probably hear them too. Um, and that is just a solo cup. So how I start all my plants, let me actually take a step back here. I start all my plants in these solo cups. So these are a, a couple Thai dragons. What I'll usually do is I'll plant five seeds to a cup and then put a plastic bag over them and let them germinate 
Um, usually takes between a week and three weeks. Depends on the variety, depends on the seeds, there's a lot of factors. But the best method for germinating them is just to put them into some dirt, let them do their thing, make sure you keep them really nice and hot and humid, and they'll, uh, they'll pop up. So then I like to separate them out into either individual cups. So you can see all these guys used to be all in one cup, but uh, now they're all in individual cups. Got some, some fun varieties here. These are the youngest ones that I have. They're, uh, they're a little bit late. These ones actually, I want to talk about these mutants for a moment because they're very interesting. You can see like, this looks nothing like a pepper plant, but believe it or not, these mutant candlelights and this guy here, this is a Zion mutant. And over here, I've got another Zion mutant. This is a Zion mutant and another mutant candlelight. Actually, you can see it's got flowers already. It's pretty neat. Um, but anyways, for whatever reason, these mutant strains started growing more fern-like leaves instead of these regular leaves that most pepper plants have. And uh, it's kind of become a bit of a community project to try to grow them out, cross them with different things and see if we can get these mutant strains more prolific. Um, but the point of these cup method is right now, I'm just watering this guy from the top, but eventually the roots will start to grow down and come out of these little holes in the bottom. Actually, you can see already, there's some roots coming out. I wonder if you can see that right there. So then once the roots start to grow, you can just take some, some nutrients. Um, there, there's some nutrients in the soil, but uh, if you want to boost the growth, you can take some nutrients and just put them right in this bottom cup. And the roots will continue to grow out of the bottom cup and drink up the nutrients and you can, you can grow the plants really big and strong. Um, let me see if I can find... Actually, I've got one over here I can show you. So, this guy here, this is a caramel maruga. It's a little bit older. Um, it's had a few months to grow compared to the ones I was just showing you there. And you can see it's got some nice roots growing in the bottom. So all I do to feed these guys is uh, I've got these buckets full of uh, plant nutrients that I mix from uh, this three-part series. Um, so this is the General Hydroponics. A lot of people use this. I used a one-part uh, mix for a long time, but I'm now using this three-part. And it basically gives me the freedom to mix them in different quantities so that I can make my plants either grow leaves or start to grow flowers and peppers. Um, and that just depends on, you know, so this is the micros is sort of the base and then this is for vegetative growth, so leaves and stem and so on, and then the bloom is for uh, for bloom. So once I decide I the plant's big enough and I want to start making peppers, we'll start giving it more of the bloom mix. And uh, then this last, so, uh, really for hydroponic plants, it's really important to, uh, to add calcium and magnesium. Most, uh, most mixes will come with a CalMag supplement. Um, it's just something that pepper plants specifically really need. And then uh, most water that comes out of the tap here is right around pH 7, so it's just neutral. Um, peppers like it slightly acidic, so I'll use a little bit of pH down to bring the, the acidity of the, the water that the, the peppers are sitting in to closer to 6 or, well, between 5.5 and 6.5. Um, yeah, so once, uh, once they've grown out of these double cups, I have a second stage that I like to do, um, and that's just with these Starbucks cups that I have taped up. Roots don't really like light, so, uh, so I make sure that no light can get in down here. And uh, you can see this just gives the plant a little bit more room to grow the roots out. I've got uh, some, some nutrients down there. And uh, yeah, it just uh, it sort of gives it a little bit more space. The plant can spend a little bit more time and effort on the roots. Um, this one is getting a little bit tall. But uh, after they're done that, they go up into these ones. So this guy here, this is actually another uh, deep water culture hydroponic setup. The idea just being that instead of uh, using dirt, I just let the plant grow all of its roots down into here and uh, we can fill it up nice and full because I've got that air pump in there making all those bubbles and making sure that the roots have lots of oxygen. Um, and this is, so this is a sugar rush peach. Uh, 
you can see it's got tons of little peppers starting on it. It's a nice little uh, little pepper bush. Um, and yeah, same thing. It just grows right out of a solo cup, like I said. And I like to just take the solo cup and put it right into the bucket. And you just keep growing the roots out bigger and bigger until the plant is the size you want. Um, same thing with this guy. This is called a, a Chinese five color. You can see it has these really cool purple peppers. This is, this is the air pump, by the way. And I grow everything under these LED grow lights. Um, but anyways, it has these really cool purple peppers all over it. They start off purple, and then I believe they turn kind of orange, and then yellow, and then red. So, at any given time, you can have lots of really, really interesting, beautiful colors on this plant. Um, and uh, I did cut it back, and I started growing it again, but... So all the peppers on it right now are purple, but I'm hoping in the next couple weeks here I'll have, uh, I'll have some more colors going on it. But uh, the other method that I use, hydroponic that is, is the Kratky method. And it's a very similar concept, but like I said, the, the plants need oxygen, the roots need oxygen. So in order to make sure, so all Kratky method is, is the same sort of idea where you've got this bucket and you're growing the roots out into them, but I don't use an air pump in these ones at all. So you need to have the liquid level a little bit lower. Um, I'll actually pop the lid off. You can see this guy's growing roots right down into that there bucket. Um, this is actually, God, the leaves on this plant are massive. Look at that thing. This is a Raptor Ripper Yellow. It's kind of a, an interesting variety of the UK, I think. Um, that's another thing, actually, I haven't really mentioned. There are so, so many different types of peppers. Like, hundreds that you've never heard of, I guarantee it. It's a... Uh, it's a really fun thing to grow. But anyways, so the idea with the cracky method is that this air gap that the roots have here is going to make sure that the roots can breathe all the time, but as the plant drinks, the water level will go down, and that'll create a bigger air gap, but the roots will also continue to grow down all the way to the bottom of the bucket. And then once they're done that, the plant will know that it's time to start producing. Um, and yeah, I've got a few. This is another Sugar Rush Peach. Um, you can see this guy has split naturally and started to make some flowers, um, which some people think you should pinch your, your flowers early so the plant will continue focusing on growing leaves and whatnot and getting bigger, but uh, for growing plants inside, I don't necessarily want them too big. I love these plants over here, but it's a lot of work to make sure they don't dry out and to move them around. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to keep these guys a little bit smaller. I've got... Uh, so like I said, this is the whole, the hydroponic half of the, the grow tent. I'll show you guys these here too. Um, so these are just little mason jars that I fill with uh, water and I, I grow plants out of them as well. And you can see they're a little bit smaller right now. I've got a few more up here. Um, but it's just, it's higher maintenance because I have to refill them very often. But again, it's just another neat way to grow smaller plants quickly indoors. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let's take a quick look over on the other side of the tent here. So a few more hydroponic things, we'll get back to that in a second, but these are the ones that I'm still growing in soil. So uh, we've got, this is another Reaper crossed with a Jace Peach Ghost Scorpion. This one's called the Leviathan Scorpion. There's so many interesting ones. Let's see, this guy's actually got some flowers on it. This one's called the Black Hungarian. Oh god, I don't know if you can see the pollen just falling off of that thing. Um, one of the nice things about pepper plants is they do self-pollinate, so it's uh, it's easy to get them to start producing. You don't have to worry about bringing in another plant and whatnot, to, or a female plant rather. This guy's called a death spiral. I think this is a Trinidad X strain. Lots of lots of interesting stuff. This guy here actually, ahi penne. Look at all these peppers growing on it already. So this is uh, an example of what I was talking about earlier, where if you don't pinch the flowers off, it'll basically just get to this size, make a few peppers, and uh, once you clip the peppers off, it might start growing again. But you can kind of uh, encourage the plant to do what you want by, by keeping the flowers or not, and by adjusting the size of the pot. Uh, now, the grow tent a few weeks ago, a few days ago, was full like full 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 every single corner had plants in it i couldn't even walk around this is kind of my little area where i work couldn't even walk around in here 
um, <laughs> because, well, I had a ton more plants and most of them are now outside in the garage tent because I'm slowly but surely hardening them off and getting them ready to grow outside for the rest of the summer. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hop outside and take a look at those in a few minutes here. Just wanted to, before we do that, show you guys these. This is a, another cracky plant. Um, what are you? This is a peach naga. This is a very uh, prolific pepper and really strong indoor producer. Um, and yeah, so these are growing in a, in a net cup and uh, what's called rock wool. It's um, what most people do rather than use a solo cup, but you can kind of do both. Well, actually, you can kind of do whatever you want. <laughs> And then this guy here, this is so, uh, you can see here, I do have the air pump um, is running in. And so what I actually like to do is um, all these ones over here, they, uh, they started in this container. These are some of the ones I just added. You can see they're a little bit smaller, um, but I've got the air pump running in there, making sure the roots get lots of oxygen. A um, couple different methods, net cups, solo cups, roots growing out of the bottom of all of them. And uh, very happy plants, but you know, once the plant gets to this size and starts to overshadow all the other plants in the box, I'll move it into its own bucket, keep letting the roots grow out. Um, eventually, I'd like to get air pumps for all of them because I have found that uh, deep water culture is a much better method. Okay, so we're just outside in the garage tent. Uh, you can see I've got a whole bunch of different plants in here. Um, these are all soil. I don't have any of my hydroponic ones out here because I don't think they'll enjoy the temperature fluctuations. Um, we're in Alberta, so it does still get quite cold at night. Um, but uh, yeah, so typically with the soil plants, I do them in stages. I got a couple tomatoes in here too. Uh, don't mind those. <laughs> but what I'll do is I, I start, you know, five seeds in a solo cup, and then I'll usually keep one or two in solo cups, and I'll transplant the rest out into these uh, four and a half inch. Um, little guys, this is a Sugar Rush Red. Used to be a Reaper Brain, but now it's a Sugar Rush Red. Um, and you can see this guy's a few months, uh, a few weeks old. Um, these, uh, these Sugar Rush Reds were actually stunted for a little while, but they're back on track. And then, once they get a little bit bigger, you can see, uh, so this is a Sugar Rush Peach, actually. Um, you can see it actually has a couple little blooms starting there, little tiny nebby flowers, but... Um, we don't actually want that, and that happens because the roots have grown to the capacity of the container. So if you want to just keep the plant growing and keep it getting bigger, um, you just need to keep transplanting them up. So the next stage is into these one-gallon containers. Um, this is a just a peach habanero. But uh, you can see it gives the, the roots a little bit more room to grow out, and the plant will get a little bit bigger. And then the next stage is these two-gallon containers. So this guy is, let's see, this is a Bula Bubblegum 7-Pot Orange crossed with a SRTSL, which is a um, specific type of scorpion pepper that has a really long tail, I believe. Um, there, there are tons of different really interesting crosses. This is a, a Jay's Peach Ghost. Uh, actually, no, this is a Devil's Brain. This is a Jay's Peach Ghost. Uh, this one is called an Li Black. Um, got a... Kangstar uh, Kangsta Yellow. This is a Kangstar Lemon Starburst. Couple, this this tall kind of gangly guy here is a uh, Pink Tiger crossed with a Naga. Um, really interesting pepper. I'm excited to see what those look like. But then, uh, yeah, so after these two gallon containers, I've actually just got some three and five gallon containers um, just over here. So this is a Kangstar Chocolate Starscream. I've got uh, another Reaper Brain here. And an Ahi Penne. Lots of really interesting varieties growing, but you can kind of control the size of the plant by keeping it in a different size of container. So you can see that this guy has got lots of flowers and will probably start producing peppers soon. Um, whereas those two over in the corner there, they have a lot more work to do growing roots, so they'll need a little bit more time. But Eventually, those plants will be quite a bit bigger, so um, I might transplant these guys up at some point, but I don't think... I mean, I have so many plants, I don't really need them to get too much bigger. But uh, the reason I have them out in the garage tent is because the temperatures are fluctuating quite a bit at night, and if I took them straight out of the basement and tried to put them into 
you know, direct sunlight or if it's still getting below 10 degrees at night here, so the peppers would not be very happy. Um, I do have grow lights in here, so I run them on a nighttime cycle so that the lights can produce enough heat to keep the plants warm overnight so they don't freeze and die. But uh, what I'm doing is I just take them out every morning, I open up the tent, and I let the sun shine in. Um, for a couple of them, I'll pull them out, put them on the driveway, and that's just, it's called hardening off. So it's slowly introducing the plants to direct sunlight because they've been in very closely controlled conditions for the last three months or so. And then eventually they'll be ready to move outside. And then the sun can do the rest of the work because, well, operating grow lights is actually pretty expensive. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's the garage tent. So uh, these guys are all going into various gardens over the next couple weeks, and uh, hopefully they're all finished hardening off. I've got them at about an hour of direct sunlight at this point. So I started with 20 minutes, and then I did 40. I'm up to an hour, and the weather is about to take a downturn, but hopefully by the week after that, I can get them up to two, and then four, and so on. Coming. All right, so let's get started making some hot sauce. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is just chop up these chocolate habaneros. Uh, now I do actually recommend that you wear gloves when you do this, because uh, if you get the oil on your finger and then you touch your eyes, it'll really hurt, or anywhere else on your body. But uh, yeah, let's just start chopping into these things. You can see the inside has this really nice kind of reddish brown color. Um, now, typically the top of the pepper is quite a bit spicier than the bottom of the pepper. And that's because the oils with all the spicy stuff inside of them are, here, let me give this another chop, right up in this placenta here. And you can see uh, actually on the inner wall of the pepper as well, there is quite a bit of oil. And, uh, and that's the spicy stuff. That's the stuff we like. So let's uh, chop all these up here. So we're just going to use a couple of uh, red bell peppers that I grabbed from the grocery store here. Uh, I grow a ton of different ty types of peppers, but only spicy ones. So uh, if I want something that's not so spicy, I do have to go get it from the store. Uh, you can see these peppers here are actually a little bit overripe, uh, so they're not the prettiest. They might not be the best in like a, a salad or whatever, but they are perfect for hot sauce. And uh, it's really important to use our food, even if it's not pretty. So uh, let's chop these up and get them out on the barbecue. You can see too, I mean, even though it's kind of wrinkled on the outside, perfectly fine on the inside. You'd never know. So, like I said, it's important to use all your food. You don't want to be wasting anything. So let's just uh, pop these guys onto the grill. You can see I gave them a little bit of oil to make sure they get nice and dark and crispy. Uh, roasted red peppers is one of my favorite flavors. Um, it goes really, really nice with the, uh, the spicy peppers. And uh, we're also going to add a couple other things, but we'll get to that after these are done growing up. Oh yeah. Yeah, those are ready. I think uh, it's about time to take these off the grill and we'll uh, get them all chopped up and move them on into the Instant Pot. Beautiful. Alright, so we have all of our ingredients ready. As you can see, there's not very many. Um, we're going to just start off by putting all this stuff in the Instant Pot. So let's start with the chocolate habaneros. We've got a bunch of them into the Instant Pot. Uh, while the roasted red peppers were cooking up here, I uh, chopped up some of the other ingredients, but let's add these first into the Instant Pot. Yep. Now we're gonna put uh, some, some red onion and some white onion. These are just raw. Should give it uh, a nice flavor, and then a whole whack of garlic. Um, I really like garlic, and some of my favorite sauces are really garlic forward, so we're gonna put a whole bunch on in there. Let that all settle down, and then all I'm gonna do is take some water, and I'm gonna fill it until everything is almost covered, not quite, um, just till we can kind of see the water level there. And then I'm just gonna add a bunch of salt. 
Um, so all we're going to do is we're going to take all this stuff in the Instant Pot. I'm going to kind of swish it around a little bit and let that salt dissolve. And then uh, we're going to pressure cook it on high for two minutes. And that's going to, first of all, kill any bacteria or anything like that that's growing in the peppers. It's also going to squeeze the juices and the oils from the peppers and the garlic and the onion all into this salt brine that we're, uh, we're cooking the peppers in, or we're cooking the sauce in. And then after that, we're just going to put everything in the blender. And we will have sauce. Yeah. Beautiful. Turn that on. We're going to do pressure cook. Two minutes on high. And uh, that's just going to go ahead and do its thing. Other really important thing, make sure the Instant Pot is sealed. Okay, so the Instant Pot is all done. It's pretty loud in here, but I just wanted to show you guys up here. See how the uh, Instant Pot is sealed and this little tab is, is up. That means there's still pressure inside. What you want to do, I'm just letting it naturally release. So uh, instead of creating well, a tear gas canister, <laughs> I'm just uh, letting it slowly release the pressure over time. And then as soon as that little tab goes down, I'll know that it's ready to open. And then we can pour that and put it in the blender. Okay, we are just about finished. We've put our peppers and all of our ingredients to the Instant Pot, pressure cooked them real good, made them nice and hot, made sure there's nothing bad growing in there. Now we've blended them up into a nice consistent liquid. You can see this has an absolutely beautiful color. I'm very excited to taste it. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and pop this into some of these hot sauce bottles. Let's go ahead and start pouring. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. Look at that color. That's awesome. All right, there we have it. A couple bottles, so let me just get some lids for these guys. So we're gonna start off with uh, some of these little stoppers. Um, that's just going to make sure that we don't accidentally dump a ton of hot sauce onto our food. Snap that on just like that. And then we're going to use red lids to let everybody know that this sauce is no joke. And that's the stuff right there. So you can see it's got some of those nice black flakes from the, uh, the roasted red peppers. It's got a really nice deep sort of crimson color from the, uh, the chocolate peppers. Um, we're actually going to loosen this off a little bit just so all the heat and everything can escape. And we don't want the bottles to explode in the fridge. Okay, let's uh, let's have a little bit of a taste. This is my favorite part. This is, I mean, being able to taste the things that you create out of food that you grew is unbelievable and not a feeling I ever would have known a year ago. So let's uh, let's see what this is like. Let's get a little more on there. Oh yeah, Ooh, little drip. That is beautiful. Look at that consistency. Oh, all right. Let's have a taste. Cheers. Oh my. That's hot. I, uh, oh, so tasty though. That is unbelievable. I really hope, uh, I can share this sauce with everybody someday, but for now, I'm just going to eat probably all of this. And, uh, thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know either in the comments or in the chat.